Okie dokie. Wow. All right, this is my first uh, paint pen demo. And I've got all these paint pens, mostly Posca, some Molotov. Um, yeah, some Montana. And I think I'm going to paint a mushroom because that is a good form to uh, practice like light source. And then I'll do some clouds and trees and grass because those are fun. And good way to practice texture. I um, hope y'all can hear me. And here we go. So I'm gonna do, I've got this little wood panel um, I'm going to decide whether to do the wood side or the white side, but I think I'll do the white since uh, things will turn out more vibrant. Alright, let's see if I can keep this under like 20 minutes. Or whatever. Um, alright. I was thinking to do monochrome since that's what my lesson later today is gonna be. So, let's go. Uh, this will be interesting. I've got no white, or very little white. <laughs> um, but since the background's white, I can use water and just uh, thin out like the black and use gray. Mushroom form. I'm looking at a, uh, a little Google image. So I'm just gonna sketch out that. Ba do a basic sketch with uh, something light that I can go over later that won't come through too dark. Um, that way I can keep this mushroom color light. Ba -ba. No gills. A little skirt. Skirt. Um, so I'm just doing a little suggestion. Very loose. I like to kind of do a little scribble styles. Adds a little character and is fun. That's why. Suggest a little grass. I'm gonna pretty much go over all this later. So that's why it's just, just like zero pressure. Just kind of have fun with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So please. Um, these super basic as well, cause I'm gonna do clouds behind them. When I start coloring in stuff, I start from the furthest thing back and work forward like so i'll do the background first like the sky um and then the hills and probably then the trees or the grass and then save like the uh the main focus for last so i don't smudge it while i'm working on everything else um great clouds Clouds. Um, so I gotta pick a light source. And the picture I'm using is kind of up here. I'm just gonna do a little gradient. So I've got the uh, canvas wet right now, so it's still pretty easy. I'm gonna it's drying out though. I'm gonna spray it more. Got this little water spray. Uh, I just got a sprayer and filled it with water. So I'm going over the trees, but that's okay. It'll kind of show up still, and I'll use that as a suggestion later. So just kind of smooth out that gray. to clouds over the top of this gradient. And 
So paint pens is a lot of just going back and forth um, with a couple colors. So a lot of times you should be holding at least one or like sometimes I got a handful of colors and I'll just be going back and forth and back and forth between colors. <clears throat> Usually I have uh, more ink in these white pens. Um, but making it work with uh, water. Water. working pretty quick. Um, I like to do imp a lot of imperfection that makes a little more character than if it were all just a smooth, smooth gradient. Um, I guess it just depends on what you feel and uh, what you think is pretty. That's the most important thing. Like, just focus on <clears throat> making things that you think are pretty, because usually if you think they're pretty, other people will. Um, and usually if you kind of more try to uh, do what other people what you think other people are gonna like it doesn't turn out that great most often um, so cool we got this uh, gradient basically and this little light source up at the top right there um, whether it's the moon or the sun yet we don't know <clears throat> we don't know, but it, I don't think it matters. It matters quite yet. Um, if you haven't noticed, I'm a mumbler, so I'll try to enun enunciate a little more. And, oh, oh shoot. And not adjust. Oh! <laughs> and not do that. Sorry, this is the first time, and I'm still working out how to set up everything. Um, oh, Jesus. All right. <clears throat> there we go. All right. So, um, pretty much do clouds getting smaller starting smaller at the top and getting bigger at the, actually <laughs> starting uh, smaller closer to the horizon like they're in the distance and um, bigger the closer they get and I should have started at the horizon so I could overlap stuff as they get closer like right now I'm this cloud I'm making is supposed to be behind this top cloud. So I'll just kind of go over. So yeah, I'll start down here. And I just do loops and swoops and like big circles pretty much. Just a lot of spirals in my work. Um, but you just want an organic little loopy puffy cloud and when they're further back they're gonna be smaller little loops smaller little puffs um, just because just because <laughs> uh, and try to add Add a little white in there. The moon is hitting it. I think we're gonna probably go moon. And again, <clears throat> a lot of scribbles, just kind of getting down some pigment, which I will smear with the other pen. So. The more pens you have, the better. It's nice to uh, even keep pens that are, like this pen is pretty much dead and empty, but I can use this uh, 
tip as a sponge to just kind of smear paint. <clears throat> Excuse me. So more clouds. Hmm. I'm trying to keep them all, keep the bottom of them uh, straight with the horizon line. Um, when they're far away, they're going to be the bottom of them is going to be straighter, and as they climb in the sky, you can start to see the bottom of the cloud more. And I'll use, use dark uh, color to suggest that. And there's gonna be little ovals under each kind of swoop. There's a, uh, where those uh, little, little bubble things go up, uh, the cloud is thicker below it to kind of support all that bubble. Um, ba -da -da -da. So I'm gonna, in my demo today, I'm gonna rely on a lot of questions from people because I'm still learning kind of uh, how to vocalize most of this. A lot of it is just intuitive and I've taught myself kind of how to create a light source and um, create depth and um, still figuring out how to explain it. So, basic clouds, um, maybe go one little guy here, because I like the balance. And, yeah, I want to have stuff behind the mushroom so it pops. Create more depth, right, I think that's going to work for now. Probably add highlights in the clouds later. Um, let's go to a horizon line, a little uh, mountain action. Just a little suggestion. And uh, when you're using paint pens, you can usually see the stroke, like the line work. and. Uh, just like with a brush, I guess you can. Do, it's just, it works the same, but you want to follow the contours of whatever you're working on, um, whether it's clouds or mountains or grass. Um, you want to really keep in mind the stroke pattern, and all these little lines are going to show up and end up looking like little contours and details of hills going going into the distance. And uh, same thing with the sky, with this, with the hills. You want to start really small at the background, like at the furthest away landmark, whatever. Just use really small um, strokes, like a small pen tip. And then as things get closer to you, they'll get bigger and bigger details, and they also get darker outlines. Um, the things furthest back from you have smallest outlines and as they get closer the outline gets bigger and darker um, that's a technique i used in uh, or i learned in like a illustration class we're doing comic books and stuff and in comic books they use that technique a lot it's like the main subject usually has the thickest outline Um, so I sprayed it with water so I could smear stuff better. Otherwise, it dries quite quick. Um, the main thing with paint pens is um, just getting the dry time uh, to work for you. So it's like really fast, pretty much as fast as you can work. It'll dry. Um, so you just want to slow that down with some water. Uh, in the first stages, I'll just use... Ooh, ooh, girl. <clears throat> if you make a little mistakes, it's okay. You can cover the happy accidents with uh, trees or just use it later. Um, don't worry about too much. Don't worry too much about getting things like exactly perfect the first time. Because I used to uh, spend a lot of time doing details, uh, like making everything perfect and then just having to go over it later. 
or cover it or any kind of thing. <laughs> so yeah, you'll probably end up covering it later, so just don't worry about it. So we've got the little mountainscape. I like to do little spirals again for contour and character. Let's start the spiral. Um, man, how do I start the spiral? Just like. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how to explain this one yet. Anyway, let's go start doing a little grass, like little fields. So instead of uh, exactly horizontal lines, I'm gonna start to do little happy faces, like little swoops. Little swoop, 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 swoop. <clears throat> Hey, I, I'm back. Wow, when I dropped the thing, uh, I didn't realize uh, the recording stopped. Shit. So, I guess now we just keep going and. Shoot. And just figure it out. Um, so, you missed a little bit. Darn, I talked about. So I guess there's just no, um, oh no, there's no more memory on my iPad. That's why this video isn't working. So I have a video of my face. Um, hopefully y'all can hear this still and see this. Um, shoot, I'm gonna try to adjust the lighting. A big old glare. Alright, well, we're just going to keep going and hope that we don't need uh, the video of my face. Alright, sure. So this is still wet enough to just go ahead and smear, add some lightness. Because uh, as things get closer to you, they're going to get darker. Everything's going to get uh, darker shades. Um, usually when I'm painting full color, things further still away from you are going to be blue um get bluer as they go to the horizon and the clouds closest to the horizon will have a little bluer tint than the ones closer generally um all right more water this is drying so quick again oh yeah so i did uh, oh well yeah you got it in the this video but I didn't get it on Video, a video of my face. Ramble, ramble. Words, words, words. Um, so, all right. I'm gonna start bringing in some black because this foreground is gonna be uh, the darkest. bottles for everyone and I also use water-filled brushes uh, so paint pans you want to just kind of um, move around a lot not go straight gradients I like to uh, like get some dark on the pan and move it up here get some more dark move it up here and this kind of wipes the pigment off the pen and uh, so when you go back down to the dark it'll lighten it up and uh, you just want to kind of use this contrast <clears throat> and get a general gradient since it's still wet you can mess with the texture but just kind of smear the pigment to where you want it and now I'm going to start doing these little loops these little happy faces just ding, 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 ding. Um, this is kind of the same technique I use with waves. <clears throat> and so yeah, 
But this, though, instead of waves, kind of the tips of the corners of the happy face, <laughs> of the smiley face, uh, meeting each other, these ones are just kind of going to go, start to go more and more up in the air and be little pointy tips of grass. And again, uh, as things get closer to you, as they get closer to the bottom of the painting, they'll be getting closer to you in this imaginary world. So they're getting bigger. Um, and again, I'll be going over most of this. So it's just kind of a suggestion. Things. But we're starting to get a little shape. Everything is looking good so far. Do a little shadow where this mushroom goes into the ground. And always a little just back and forth. Just like get some pigment down where you are generally going to want it. And then you can shape it with another usually kind of one shade closer pen. Um, if that makes sense. Just want to go, if you're using black, you want to kind of smear it with a dark gray, not a white generally because uh you'll just get your white super gray and uh <coughs> it just gets all muddy i guess but um you can work towards the white with a dark gray light gray and then white so i don't have the ideal tip of this brush um or this pen you can take the pen the nibs out and this used to be a chisel tip. Ooh, this used to be a chisel tip, and I flipped it around, and now it's just a circle, a little sponge. So, yeah. Give it some grass. Ooh, it's already been 20 minutes. Fuck. Shoot. Done. Shoot. grass gets bigger as it gets closer and add a little more water to soften up the edges of the strokes um, if you have a dry canvas the edges of each pen stroke will be a little sharper and if you get the water <clears throat> spray the water on there it'll start to bleed and that's you got to be really experimental and start to get the feel for how wet the canvas should be Bigger, bigger strokes closer to you. Go back and forth between colors. Right now I'm breaking my own rule going from black to light gray because my dark gray is out of ink. It's one thing with paint pens that when you run out of a color, you're kind of just forced to use another, you're just the next best thing. Um, and that's right learn a lot by just experimenting so i'm trying to indicate uh, just layers of atmosphere with uh leaving the tips of the grass lighter like being hit by the light and just creating shadows below them and just a lot of back and forth I should be working from the horizon line forward so that things in front can overlap the things behind. Um, PEMDAS, just the order of you, that you do everything is pretty important. Really hope you guys can see all this, but this is more just a, uh, a run through. So maybe I'll record, oh uh, doy, I'll record the demo tonight somehow. And maybe that'll be the better video. But this is just the, for myself so I can kind of practice how to talk about things and see what comes up without freaking out that I'm in front of people. Cause I'm gonna get nervous. Just like right now. All right, this will work for the grass.
maybe I'll do YouTube. Sorry. Here we go. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Well, now that I'm 25 minutes into this painting, um, I've got some video of my face going. Hello, I'm Elliot. <laughs> Elliot Ross Bliss. And here's my paint pen demo. I've got this so far. I started with the gradient, with the light source, gradient outward in grays uh did the hill actually i did the clouds next starting from the horizon line up as they get closer to you they get bigger and bigger swoops and you can start to see the bottom of the clouds more and more as they get further to the horizon they get smaller and flatter bottoms you can't really see the bottom of the clouds there and i did the hills uh, just another gradient keep it real light to indicate atmosphere as things get closer to you, they get darker and uh, start to get a little more detail. Started getting into the grass just now and it's uh, the darkest at the bottom that's closest to you. That's where the darkest shadows are gonna be. And yeah, let's go to the mushroom. So pretty much with paint pens, you always wanna start I always want to start from either light to dark or dark to light. So I'm just going to put a little white pigment there. It's going to be the lightest, uh, closest to this moon sun. It's going to be hitting the top of this mushroom a little bit. And darkest right at the bottom. And again, uh, the main focus is usually going to be the darkest thing in the painting. Um, and have the darkest outlines. Um, I like to use little spirals always. It's a basic spiral. And just uh, kind of use contours. I guess I'm imagining if an ant were on this mushroom and started at this point that's closest to the light, that's gonna be my gradient. And just imagine he spirals on the mushroom. It's just walking around the mushroom and you're tracing his little walking line. So he's gonna go out of view, going <laughs> over this edge and then he's gonna come back around and I'm always gonna follow that little contour of the spiral so I got pigment there that's uh, still wet oh, pardon me and I'm uh, gonna use my little fat white one to just go in and smear that pigment uh, again you want to start furthest away and move forward, move closer to you in the realm of the painting. Just that way the uh, layers you're making are on top, <clears throat> on top of the ones behind it. It just doesn't, looks weird if the layers are going on top of each other, but back instead of on top of each other as they come forward. Um, so basic gradient. End up a little dark, so I'll try to add some more white. Maybe keep that little spiral. Again, this just adds contour. <laughs> if your edges aren't perfect, don't worry about it, because you're gonna outline everything later. Again, you pretty much go over everything a couple times. And again, <clears throat> this uh, these gills are gonna indicate contour. It's gonna show you what the shape of the underside of the mushroom looks like and as things get closer to the edge they're gonna get closer together and uh, when they're in the middle they'll be all <clears throat> further apart and as they get closer to the edge get closer to each other and um, pick up this little black pigment I'm using white and black against my rule again but um, yeah when this little lower line is still wet you can pick up some pigment and since it's wet around it I can just smear that pigment and use it to make the lines I want 
<clears throat> and just keep in mind how much pigment is on the tip of the brush and you can move around accordingly. Um, if it's too dark and you don't want to line that dark there, just move to where you do want that line dark, that dark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and just keep in mind the things that are going to be in front of other things. So I um, did the gills before I did this little skirt, because the skirt's going to be in front of the gills. So just get some pigment down, get a little spray, because these edges are getting, uh, whatchamacallit. Getting a little unclean, I guess, a little dry. And I'm just looking at my reference, trying to keep in mind where the light is hitting. It's gonna be all shaded by the top of the mushroom here. And never has to be perfect the first time because you are gonna use other pens to make it, make the shape once you get the right pigment down. And always you wanna just like kind of keep in mind the contour of the thing you're looking at. If there's any columns that are vertical, imagine you're looking at like a stack of coins. Um, and at the bottom of the stack of coins, it's gonna be, you're gonna kind of be able to see the lower curve of it. And as you stack the coins, you're gonna kind of switch uh, contour. As you go up, the, uh, the contour is gonna get more extreme. Right in the middle, the eye level is gonna be horizontal. So pretty much at the horizon line. I guess it depends on where you are uh, as a subject in the painting. If you're on the ground, then it'll be horizontal. If you're like ant level, then uh, right where the mushroom hits the grass will be horizontal. But I'm gonna be up a little bit so I can see the bottom of the mushroom starting to go kind of down. edges. A lot of times I like to do the outer edge and fill in the middle. And just keep going back and forth until you start to like what you see and uh, start to focus on textures at that point, which is just the contour of everything. <clears throat> keep in mind when you have, I got dark pigment, so I need dark up here, so I'm going to go just smear it up there. It's still super rough, um, but as I go in and add more, just going some from super rough to more and more detail, like kind of the biggest pens you can use at first. And as the painting gets more detailed and filled in, you just go smaller and smaller pen tips. It's like decent. Ow. Get the edges you want. <clears throat> Never has to be perfect from what you're looking at. You more want to just get, uh, make sure it gets the point across, like what you're painting is, <laughs> it looks like what you're trying to paint. Um, and it, unless you're trying to make it like photorealistic. Just kind of add your own styles and flavor and, and character and um, focus on what you think looks cool again. So add some, I think the light's going to hit this little edge, so I'm going to lighten that up. Get a little, as I do little swirls and stuff, you get, it indicates texture on the mushroom. And this is where you want to use uh, just one step like one color step away from the color you're on top of. That makes sense. Like if you had a color wheel, you wanna use the color next to the color. <laughs> oh, <laughs> always. Dun, dun, dun. 
thing, the thing. And your hand is your friend, usually. Um, a lot of times you can get a lot of paint smeared up here. And that's, uh, you gotta be careful because then you can smear paints on places on the painting you don't want it. it happens a lot, but when it does, I just use that to, uh, oh, that's where a tree is going, or that's uh, just happy accidents. Alright, dropping paint caps everywhere. So, so, so far I've just used four pens. Just a big white, a light gray, a small white, because that's all I have, <laughs> and a medium black. So, I think we're ready for... Well, since, um, I don't know, you want to make sure you get stuff in the background how you really want it. Because uh, you don't want to have to go into these details after there's something in front of it, like tree branches that are going in front of this cloud. Uh, it's going to be hard to work around those tree branches. And this is just super rough. Uh, you can use your finger to soften up strokes so if you don't want hard edges uh, just kind of dab away that hard edge. I also use water filled paint brushes to, for the same effect. It's a little bit a bit more precise than my fat fingers but we're still in the early stages so do everything kind of loose and I'm trying to save time because this is already 40 minute long. All right, so just soften those edges. But trying to just focus on where this uh, sun is gonna hit stuff. And if you're fast, you can wipe away stuff. So I like to be kind of really loose and scribbly and expressive as much as I can. Again, uh, closer to the horizon line, things are gonna get smaller. So all these smaller loops, smaller sweeps. Soften, thing, soften things where you want them. Think about where the shadows are coming from, where the, where the cloud shadows itself, and where the, the moon gets through. Anyway. Highlights, moon's hitting the top of these clouds. It's a good chance to do a little, <laughs> I love doing spirals, but you can figure out just what kind of um, expression that you like. It doesn't have to be, you're just making it up, so nobody's ever gonna see the reference you're using. They're just gonna see the painting, so uh, just focus on what you think looks good the whole time. All right, so. Get some grass in front of the edge of this. Dink, 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 dink. Some grass that's in the shadow. Indicate this uh, shadow coming forward. So again, things get bigger as they come towards you. Typically towards the edge the bottom edge and soften up those edges with gray a lot of just back and forth and I feel like um, everything in nature has a little code like this grass is almost like a, a text like a font um, just all these little Whoops. Just a little wink, wink, a lot of straight up. They're all reaching for the sky, reaching for the sunlight. And just a lot of back and forth. Just getting texture and light. Um, a lot of times I'll outline things at the very end, so if it's just uh, real, not quite the right edges that you want, uh, don't worry about it. You'll 
take care of that at the very end. And it's good for things to stay blurry as they're further away anyways, so kind of leave leave the outlining and detailing to the very end, because you might just go over your work and waste your time. So yeah, PEMDAS is kind of everything with the pens that'll make, make it quick. There's a little hole in this canvas, which is a happy accident. Just fill that with black. It's a little thick, so I'm gonna soften that. See, I'm like, I've gone over this mushroom like three times, so that detail I did the first couple times, I just know that I don't need to do, do it perfect. And just layers, layers, layers. Um, it will smooth that out so it's the texture is contrasting the texture in front of it. You don't want to scribbles, the same texture everywhere. Like everything has code. Like the edges of the mushroom are just a little smoother than this pointy, sticky grass. And one thing's to layer on top of each other, each other as they get closer. All right, that's basically it. Um, do some trees. These trees are gonna be lightest as they're further away. Um, Cause the atmosphere is getting in the way of them. So they're gonna be up close to the horizon line. And just do real basic. The further away things are, the less detail you can see of them. I'm just gonna use this gray to get basic shapes, basic tree. Just imagine you are the tree and you're reaching up for the light. Like how would you go about reaching the light in the best way? And uh, usually trees don't touch each other. They, their canopies will never really touch. Uh, they'll share their space with each other. Um, and just keep uh, in mind you want an organic shape. You can usually see the branches inside the tree and uh, as you go towards the edges of the tree it gets more and more solid. You can see less space between. And again, get the uh, basic shapes and then add some pigment where you need it. It's going to be all shaded. You don't want to go too dark with this one. Um, because the trees in front are gonna be black and the trees furthest away are gonna be more light. So all that atmosphere is getting in the way of them. And again, uh, focus on the texture, the contour. You can go like sideways sometimes depending on the lines of the bark. Like if there was ants crawling horizontally around the bark, you'd be able to see like a stack of coins again. Like. Those little edges of the edges of the coin, <laughs> edge lines, contour lines. <clears throat> That's basically good. I'm gonna probably cover most of this with another trunk. Uh, maybe indicate this little shadow. Again, just two pens. <clears throat> and then decide where you want another tree. I'm gonna go a smaller one this time. Put a little pigment, the black goes a long way. I probably should be using a dark gray. <clears throat> I'm gonna go behind this mushroom so it looks, it creates depth. Get some contrast from those clouds. Shadow, shadow, shadow. Do the trunk. And go over it where you like. And you're just imagining basic shapes of a tree. Like if you squint your eyes, I use this tool a lot. If you squint your eyes, um, you start to see the basic shape and contrast of things. And you can kind of 
work out your composition that way and see if things flow smoothly. Like if anything catches my eye, I'll kind of tend to it. Um, get a little contrast in front of this cloud. The layers, layers. This is in front of the clouds, but this tree is behind this mushroom. You don't have to worry about this little edge yet. Uh, that's gonna be one of the last details. All right, this tree's gonna be pretty close, so it's dark. And trees always, always get smaller as they get, ooh, a little happy accident. I smeared it with my pinky, I used my pinky to stabilize, and a lot of times that'll get pigment. I'll wipe it off and cover the happy accident. Um, maybe start creating a little light source though. It's not totally silhouetted. There's some light hitting these branches. Oh yeah, so trees always get go from thicker at the base to uh, thinner as they go up. If it goes from thicker to thinner to thicker again, it just kind of doesn't make sense to the eye or in nature really. It doesn't usually do that unless you're a special tree. So keep in mind, I could just make this all black and then add light source later or just like uh, highlights. But I like to kind of go back and forth and get the basic branches. It's gonna start to think about where the tree starts leafing. Um, and this is a good chance to uh, cover anything that you don't, any details you don't really like in the background and try to keep in mind the ones you do like and keep those. Add, add a little dark pigment where you think it's gonna be dark. But this can be a little gradient too where it's closest to the light source. You can do the lightest color foliage. So I'm kind of covering too much. I might be working a little fast with this. Um, slow is quicker, um, like the tortoise. Slow and steady finishes the race. You don't want to scribble too fast and have to fix details. So I should slow down a little bit, but I do want to not make this like an hour long video, which I am in danger of. All right, scribble, 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 foliage. This is, has its own little code, little, um, Sometimes I will do little dots and just do forms that look nice and layer over some of the things in the background. It will create more depth. And this again, it, since it's closer, it's going to be darker than everything else in the background. It's back and forth with, uh, once you start getting too dark, use that lighter pen. Once you get starting <laughs> too light, use that dark. And as things get closer to you, they get darker. I'm gonna just make that look like it's going behind the mushroom. Um, that's actually pretty decent. I was gonna add, ah uh, yeah, cool, I'll add another little trunk for depth. And trees are never perfect either, the more you never see like an exactly perfect like Christmas tree, like clip art tree in nature. So, just oh. focus on your posture too. I was hunched too much. <laughs> um, so this is gonna get lighter on the edge, closest to the sun or the moon. Keep going back and forth. That's the cool thing about chromatic monochrome paintings is uh, you can, I don't know, choose whether it's day or night until you make the shape of the sun or moon. Mumble. Um, but 
it's a moon, I usually do a crescent shape. It fits the sun, I keep it a circle. But in this case, I have uh, <coughs> covered the sun with this tree so much that you can't even see the shape. So it's just up to the audience now. Um, so I'm going finished at the top to a gradual, smooth, thicker trunk of the base. The, and same thing with the stack of coins. Um, at eye level, they're kind of equal. Uh, they're horizontal, and as they get go up, a stack of coins or the walking ants, I start to see them curve. Anyway, I get some thought, a little texture in here. Finger is your friend. At least you can choose for some to be your friend. Extra texture. In a monochromatic painting, um, contrast and texture is the way you indicate uh, just everything, I guess. Um, there's a little shadow from this tree. It's not going to be totally black of a shadow because it's further away, but as it gets closer to you, I'm just going to fade it out. The shadow's getting weaker as it gets further away from the tree. Alright, so that's some basic... If we add a human in here, we'll get a lot of depth. So, I'm going to add one of my basic... Everything's pretty basic in this, I guess. Start with the head. Do the body. A little curve. Um, the legs go curve like that, basically, basic triangle. And his feet are gonna be in the grass. Let's get a little Dark pigment there. Again, keep in mind the light source and the angle of the shadow. Um, shadows are a great way, again, to add contour. Think about where your shadow is hitting everything and what's in front of it. It's okay to go backwards in layers. You just want to. Um, do it kind of loosely, I guess. I just realized that uh, you're going to do a lot of strokes, and pretty much you're going to only see the very last couple strokes you make on top of everything, so just go from loose to sharp, like fast to slow with your movements. Right, that's pretty good. Maybe add a little branch shape. Get some dark, I know I'm gonna want the dark. And come in and hit it with some light. Fifty-four minutes. All right, let's just make this an hour painting. Cool. Um, that will do. Uh, I want this to be a little darker. It's getting closer to me than the tree branches up here, which are still a little dark, but. Thing, back and forth. This is the code of the branch. You're just leafy, 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 swirly, twirl. So a combo of what you think looks good and what you would see in nature. And you can squint your eyes to help you make it look accurate to what you're thinking that would look like in nature. Like if you 
go out in nature and squint your eyes, you can see basic shapes uh, and gradients. <clears throat> gradients a lot better. Just needs more shadow. Just smear it with my hands. I'm liking that texture. All right, now I can get to uh, smaller pens. I usually go smallest pens last, and I will. Oh, you know what? This. Uh, oh, it's all right. I'm gonna do the. This tree is lower on the ground than this mushroom, so it's in. Fr it's more in front as things get lower to the canvas. They get. Uh, closer to you and darker and thicker so this is in front so I got to bring this branch in front of this but I want to do a little texture first maybe I'll do these little like Amanita bumps which are gonna be bigger closer to you and more like circles as um, follow this ellipse kind of as things get closer to the edge the ovals are going to get skinnier and on the very edge they're going to be flat you're just going to be seeing the edge of them um, i'll be going over these with branch anyways so don't worry about it too much they're going to get smaller and skinnier as they get further away from you and just kind of you can squint your eyes to see the basic composition of this um, it's a good way to indicate shape and volume on the mushroom. Uh, maybe a little light hitting this, but just a little bit. I like to uh, outline things in white. And this can be loose because the uh, black, black outline I'm going to do next is going to clean it up a lot. This guy is going to be a main... Uh, main subject of this and with the paint bends you can really change the shape and outline of everything so you don't have to be perfect the first time like this guy I'm gonna uh, go over in black again I just want this white highlight so he stands out and I'm gonna go in and fill fill in with black to uh, finish up so pretty much gonna just go use this white to separate things where I want them separated add a little contrast and it's also kind of a cartoon comic book style effect that I like where things are big bold black outlines with white highlight around it. So there's <clears throat> basic white highlight. And this will probably be maybe maybe these are hitting getting hit by light. There's a good way to clean up the edges too. These last two pens I used the uh, black and white. It's a good way to just define things where you want them defined. And highlight and shadows. You just kind of add everything. Keep in mind where the sh the mushroom is shading. The grass. And kind of less is more. You don't want to go overboard with any one texture keep like some contrast that'll work maybe just continue this little horizon line it's like horizon 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 it's just kind of skinnier closer horizons that are lighter as they get away further away from you and thicker and darker as they come closer to you and further apart from each other There's some light hitting this tree. Again, you don't want to do too much of this technique on everything. You want to keep some contrast. But I think this will highlight and 
make these trees pop a little bit. And try to just cover the parts that you are not fond of. Like if you like anything in there, try not to cover it. Just like embellish it, complement it. All right, that's pretty decent. I, don't, I don't think I'm gonna keep it like that. This um, highlighter, this uh, smallest one that Micron makes, or that Posca makes, it's a 0.7 millimeter. And I'll probably do a video about how to get the right ink out of the pen, but this is my basic technique. Careful when you shake this with no cap, because you can uh, just la launch drops of paint onto your canvas which you don't always want, but that's another happy accident I figured out is that uh, you can flick paint like that out of the tip of the tip of the pen. And it's a really good and controlled way to do splatters and stars and sparkles and fairy dust. So, um, I usually start furthest away from me, like top left with anything really that I think I might smear with my hand because I, I rest my hand on uh, I rest my uh, I rest my hand on the canvas uh, a lot just for stabilization which I should probably get over um, anyway these are I'm doing like the top of it and you can see the edge usually <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to create a little little like discs little coins on this oops i went outside i was trying to keep uh, this white as a highlight like an edge um, otherwise i'll have to go back and do that white outline again so it's highlighted just doing spirals keeping in mind the edges um, these are going to start to get <clears throat> if there was texture on them they would get wider apart as they get closer to you and thicker this edge is going to be thicker closer to you and things get closer towards where they oh my goodness in the middle and thinner on the edges and it doesn't have to be perfect I'm going real loose and away from uh, the picture I'm using but now I'm kind of just focusing on what I want to look good or what I think looks good and how to do that and making the lines thicker as they're closer to you and thinner as they're further away. It's pretty much the last step. What are we at? Oh, 104. I, man, this time flies. So this black is uh, indicating like little cracks and edges and uh, deep pockets where the, the light isn't getting to. Make sure you have enough ink, get that flow of the tip right. This guy is on the left of where I want to work, so start him. Another stylized. Little Popeye. Popeye forearms. Ooh, yikes. This again doesn't have to be perfect because you can always go refine stuff at the end. But I think I'm gonna just 
We're slow and steady and try to make this work the first time. Little shadows. <laughs> Big old shoulder. All right, edge. It's gonna be a little texture, little edge lines, little texture spiral, edge line, grass shadows, grass definition. Get these edges clear. Get a smooth gradient, squint your eyes so you uh, can notice when there's sharp edges and when you want a sharp edge or a soft edge. Just go in and <laughs> change the pigment to suit your needs. And get edges. Um, I don't usually outline everything, but... I will uh, hide my signature in these little scribbles so that when you squint your eyes, the uh, my signature isn't like a huge glaring part of the painting, but it's there still. So I'm just gonna do some edge lines here. I wanna keep that edge highlight, but. Bring in a little detail. And smooth lines there. Ooh, all right, so one other thing I do is burbs. I usually do them in groups of three. I never usually do one by itself. Groups of two or three. And these are gonna be I'll do them all black, but they're gonna be smaller as they're further away, obviously, and closer and thicker, <laughs> darker and thicker as they get closer. Um, so be really careful. You do wanna slow down in this phase because you could give yourself more work if you just scribble and like don't like it and have to change it. You can't really, it's hard to go over stuff behind stuff you just did. So you always want to kind of make sure before you go on top of anything, make sure you kind of like it enough to where you can just cover what you don't like, but keep what you do. And the more you do it, the more you get the hang of that. All right. I hope that stayed in view. Man, I probably wouldn't be working off screen for a while, but oh boy. A more contour line. This is just needs some texture. Wow. Computer screen timed out. Uh, a little, little more girth. We can make it look. I don't know. More accurate to the eye. More accurate. Alright. And. Signature. Elliot Bliss, February 2023, follow your bliss, E-B, E, V. E -V. Uh, that's pretty much it, and then I'll disguise my just get rid of details I don't like, make things smooth. Never never really done with a painting, but it's always just like, all right, that'll 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 do for, like it's the idea across. It's like, what was your goal with a painting? 
Uh, mine is usually just to make something that I like the look of and it gets my idea across, like my expression across. And you kind of want your paintings to have a meaning or a subject. If it's just like who, I don't know, nobody ever keeps in their photo album a picture of a tree. They usually keep pictures of people or pets or creatures or, I mean, they do. I don't know, it's up to you, but uh, <laughs> I usually like to have a subject matter, like adding a person or an animal in there just makes a lot of, some meaning, I guess, some context that's more relatable. So I'm just, I guess I'm outlining everything here. It's very scribbly. But that is pretty much the painting in an hour and 10 minutes. So things in the background are all lighter because the atmosphere. And as they get closer, the outlines get thicker and darker. I guess I could do some thick outlines. Shoot. Uh, get a little thicker pen, just the next size up of black. Make sure I get the right thickness I want. It's nice to have a surface to the side of you that you can uh, dab the pen on. Otherwise, if you dab too hard, a lot of times it'll pour out ink. Um, I've gotten the hang of it to where it doesn't quite do that anymore. But when I was learning, it would, uh, a lot of times they would just dump out ink paint that you, don't, you just you know, ruin, have a little puddle of ink on your painting. Puddle of paint on your painting, which is no good. Oh, and doy, uh, the final step um, is to outline. With any canvas, I will go around and use my pinky to guide the edge and just Give it a border. And this is where you want to be really careful and slow as well. Oh boy. Ooh, better black. This will work. Usually I use a big old fat one, but I don't want to get up in this video. Oh girl. That's what happens. Sometimes you can get it quick and wipe it, but usually it'll leave a mark that you didn't like. But hey, happy accidents. I guess sometimes that's just where something needed to go. And the more you can figure out how to use happy accidents, um, the more you discover new techniques and new shit you would never have discovered. My favorite way to do paintings is to not have an idea of what I'm going to do, but just kind of intuitively start with a color or a shape or a pattern or a texture or, I don't know, just start with the most simple thing you can think of that might be fun to draw. Keep in mind the whole goal is you want to have fun. What are you doing if you're not having fun? Um, if it's work, if it starts to become like, ugh, I don't know, boring or feel like work, then just change it up. You're probably doing something wrong. Or, I don't know, always in life there's a path that uh, makes things fun, more fun, more meaningful, and more beautiful. And you can always choose that path. A little life lesson from Elliot Rospolis. That was the painting. Yes. I'm going to just leave it there. Thanks. Pink.